evening, please, to Luke's Gospel 23. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, tonight. And Trinity's last piece brings me clearly into this message. Luke 23, verse 33, we read these words. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him, that's the Lord Jesus, and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots, and the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him in vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew, This is the king of the Jews. And one of the malefactors which were hanged reeled on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to that public reading of his own precious truth. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 23, from verse 33, we have there tonight one of the most powerful pictures ever to be painted. And in fact, in this passage this evening, we have one of the most, or perhaps it is the most, solemn story ever told. A story, mind you, that's not fictional. It's a story tonight that's factual, and mind you, very factual. Here in this picture tonight, and here in this story, we have three crosses. Yes, three crosses, standing side by side in Calvary's rugged hill. And each cross has a different story to tell, very different. But on each cross, there's a person. And each, from each person, there's a lesson on each person. There's a lesson, and each one is a very different lesson. I want you to notice, not only do you have three crosses standing side by side, you have three men dying side by side. Three men dying. Dying in three different ways. You know, dear unsaved friend tonight, listen. You and I will get many things wrong in life. You and I will make many mistakes in life. 
And you and I will be given amples and amples of opportunities to ratify those wrongs and to overcome those mistakes. But there's one thing tonight, one thing in life that you only get one go at. One thing in life you don't want to get wrong. And that one thing tonight that you only get one go at is dying. You only get one go at dying. Let me say something tonight. Dying's big business. Dying is serious business. And mind you, you have to get it right first time. There's no second chance with dying. You get it wrong. You've got it wrong. For mind you, you only die the once. That's why Hebrews 9.27 says, It is appointed unto man once to die. You don't get two goes at it. You only get one go tonight. One go a day. The night before the great battle of the song, in faithful wood, a padre gathered a number of young men around him. The youngest was only 16. Do you want to know what he is? The oldest was 19. And he gathered these lads all around him. And he told these young lads, this time tomorrow, it's a 99.9% .9 chance that you'll be dead. And he says, now listen, young men. See to it. See to it that you die the right way. Them young men stood round that padre shivering, not shivering from the cold, shivering from the fear of what lay ahead the next day. One of the young men came and fell down at the Padre's feet, and he said, Sir, sir, give me direction. Give me direction, sir, that I may die the right way. And within minutes, every one of them was on their faces at the feet of the Padre with the same request. The Padre got down beside them, and from John's Gospel, chapter 11, verse 26, he witnessed to them these words, where Jesus said, Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? And one by one on the ground that night in fearful wood, that padre led every one of them personally, one at a time, to saving faith in the Lord Jesus, because every one of them wanted to die, die the right way. And 
the next day, every one of them did die. And tonight they're in heaven because they chose to die the right way. Here in Luke's Gospel, chapter 23 tonight, we have one man who chose to die the right way. You see, there is only one two, there's only two ways you can die. You can either die the right way, or you can die the wrong way. But you remember this tonight, you've only one go at dying. And first of all, as I look at Luke's Gospel, chapter 23, and as I see this man tonight, you know the first thing I see? I see this man's awakening. Do you know, friends, there was one time when this man mocked the Son of God? There's another scripture where we teach that both thieves mocked the Savior. Do you know what that teaches me tonight? Man can be as hard as nails, even at the point of death. I hear people saying, oh, I ain't get saved when it comes to my time to die. I believe in a deathbed repentance. Man, you I don't believe in a deathbed repentance because you mightn't get one. Look at that wee lad just 13 years of age last night in cold rain. Thump with a car in eternity tonight. Man, you, he didn't get a deathbed repentance. Dangerous tonight. But this man in Luke's Gospel, chapter 23, I see, first of all, his awakening. Do you see if a man is ever going to die right or a woman is ever going to die the right way, the first thing has to happen is that they have to be awakened tonight. An unsaved man, unsaved woman, in this meeting tonight, there's one thing you need to be awakened to tonight, and that's you need to be awakened tonight to your sin. Because here this evening, this man tonight, he opens his mouth and he says in verse 41, We indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. You know, this man's awakened. And he's awakened to his sin. He's awakened to the condemnation that he's in. Oh, sinner friend tonight, how you need to be awakened this evening to the, to the sinfulness that's bringing you under the condemnation and wrath of God. Do you know there's too many tonight in Mourn, in the kingdom of Mourn? There's too many tonight in the town of Kilkeel. There's too many tonight in the county of Down. There's too many tonight in the north of Ireland. And they're holding on to a false hope. Do you know what they believe tonight? They believe all is well when it's not well. A man who's going to die the right way or a, ma a woman who's going to die the right way is going to be awakened first to their sin. You see, this man was awakened tonight. He was awakened. And you see, friend, in this portion of God's Word tonight, this man saw what every sinner needs to see. This man saw what his sin was leading him to. You know, friend, tonight, there's many in this meeting knows what it is to be awakened, name one of them. 
You know, friend, there was a time I used to mock Christians. I used to say, Ach, them boys, only good living for a living. But there was a day when I was awakened, you know. I was awakened to my sin. As this man was awakened to his sin. Do you know the question I'm going to ask you tonight? What do you think awakened this man to his sin this evening? You know what I think it was? I think it was the love of God. You know, surely this man must have watched the Lord Jesus as he was being crucified. He must have watched them as they drove the nails through his hands and feet. They must have, he must have saw, you know, there's something about this man. This man's different. This man's not punching or kicking the soldiers. In fact, this man's praying for them. Do you know tonight, nothing breaks men more than the love of God. Our oh, friend, tonight, if only you could see the love of God. The love of God wakens men to their sin. I wonder tonight, does the love of God touch you? Nothing tonight has awakened sinners more than the love of God. This man's awakening tonight. I'll tell you something else about this man. I not only see this man's awakening, I see this man's alarm, and I'll tell you, he's well alarmed tonight. And I'll tell you why he's thinking, he, he's alarmed, he's thinking what happens after death. Tell me, have you thought of what happens after death? He's alarmed here. You see, dear unsafe friend, this man tonight's alarmed as to where his sin has brought him, and he's alarmed where his sin is bringing him. You alarmed tonight. Tell me this. Are you ever scared about dying? Are you ever scared about where you'll be a split second after you die? Or mean you, you would need to be scared. I remember taking a measuring tape out to the fellow one day in the earth trade counter and pulled it out to 70 inches. He says, hey, boss, what age are you? And I'll never forget it. He was 68, and he put his hand on the 68 inch. And I said to him, hey, did you ever see how far you've come in life? And all the wee bit that's left. He says, but I'll tell you what scares me, he says. It's what comes after. What comes after. A man who dies the right way is afraid, first of all, what comes after. You know, friend, it doesn't end at death. I'm telling you, this boy here in Luke 23 believed it didn't end at death. I'll tell you one thing, dear, it'll not end for you at death either. And not end for me. Certainly won't end for you. This man's alarmed tonight. Away in Sydney of Australia, a British naval officer was walking down a street. And a man came up behind him and said, If you should be called into eternity within the next 24 hours, your soul will be in heaven or hell. This man had no clue who he was. But the words alarmed him so much so that he felt his need as a sinner. Saw him sit, saw himself unfit to enter into the presence of a holy God. He sought for a minister, told him what happened. And the minister pointed him to Christ. He was alarmed. This dying thief was alarmed. Were you alarmed tonight? For mind you, dying the right way takes you to be alarmed this evening. 
And then thirdly, I want you to notice something else. I want you to notice this tonight. I want you to notice his acknowledgement. It says this, And he said unto Jesus, you know, friend, tonight, he's not scorning Jesus now. He's seeking Jesus. Man that scorned him, he's now seeking Jesus. Do you know what he acknowledges? He suddenly realizes and he suddenly acknowledges this man crucified next to me. He's not there to save himself at all. He's there to save me. He's there to die for me. You know what he acknowledges tonight? That the one crucified next to him, that's the door to heaven. Oh, one save friend tonight. You need to acknowledge that tonight. And you need to forget all the old rituals and rigmarole that religion brings before you. Let all these other things go tonight. Be like this man. Flee to Christ. He's the only Savior. Christening won't save you. Getting confirmed won't save you. Christ is the Savior. Christ bore your sin. Christ hung on the cross. Christ died there. And Christ died as the Lamb of God. If you're holding on to some ritual, religious ritual, you'll be damned in hell if you die tonight. You'll die wrong. If that's the way and that's the things you're holding on to. And there's people in the kingdom of Mourn holding on to all these things, but they're dying wrong. You want to die the right way tonight. Hold on to Christ. He's the only Savior. Because you'll go to hell, friend, if you die any other way. This dying thief looks to the man on the middle cross and he says, He's there for me. You know, one saved friend, he was there for you. But I want you to think of someone else tonight. There's his acceptance. He not only turned to the Lord Jesus, I love this bit, he called him Lord. And here's what he done. He says, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. That's him receiving the Lord Jesus by faith. Do you know someone, friend, tonight, there's people, and they're depending upon works, and they're depending upon good works, and they're depending on all these things tonight. These things won't save. Look at this man tonight. He's nailed by the hands and feet. There's not a thing he can do. This man could only do what he had to do. Trust him. And that's all you need to do tonight, friend. Repent of that sin of yours and all the old silly notions that's in your head that you're all right. You're not all right. Be like this man tonight and die the right way by accepting the Lord Jesus into your heart to be your Lord and Savior. That's dying the right way, love. That's dying the right way, dear. Dying in Christ, receiving Christ into your heart by faith like this man. And do you know what we read? For as many as received him, to them give he the power to become the sons of God. Do you know that old thief that day became a son of God? Because he received he received the Savior that day. Ah, but I'm going to finish with this one tonight. Do you see when you're dying the right way, you'll not only be awakened, you'll not only be alarmed, you'll not only be acknowledging, you'll not only be accepting. I'll tell you this. Finally, 
I want you to notice his assurance. The Lord Jesus turned and says today, Thou shalt be with me in paradise. A man or a woman who receives Christ will die the right way. You're going to die the right way. And the Lord Jesus gives this man this blessed assurance tonight. Today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. An unsafe friend tonight. When it comes to dying, you remember you have only one go at it. And you want to make sure you're going to die the right way. This man in Luke 23 is a great reminder to us all what needs to take place. May it take place in your heart. May it take place in your soul. For mind you whom to know is to know life eternal. Let's bow in a wee word of prayer. Lord, tonight we, as we bow in thy presence, we realize and we recognize tonight what the great need is. And Lord, we pray for any man or woman to be awakened. It's not going to be a preacher this evening. It's going to be the Holy Spirit of God through the Word of God. And we pray earnestly tonight that that will happen. That, Lord, whoever listens to this, and whoever's here this evening, will be awakened to their great need and will seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. O oh God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our closing